We work to buy the things we need to live the life we're told we want to lead. And life is rich, and rich is nice, but all things come at a price. The very fact that a group of actors can put on in the West End and expect the public to come and pay to watch a play called Toxic Bankers really does rather demonstrate how disliked these people have become in society today. But some people are beginning to ask, do they really deserve it? Should we give them a break? I think we've gone much too far now. We're basically saying that finance is useless, that it's parasitic, that it shouldn't exist, or that it shouldn't exist in the UK at least. And I think that's totally misguided, and in fact, economic suicide for the UK. Even bankers admit that to lift the cloud of suspicion from them, a deal must now be done that ensures banks stay afloat and never again rely on us for bailing out. But their pay is so high, isn't it? The avaricious values on which our lives are built mean in this time of crisis we have to share the guilt. The official data shows that only about a third of 50p taxpayers work in the financial services industry. So two thirds don't. So they'll, they'll be entertainers, entrepreneurs, people who work in industry, some doctors, uh, actors, you know, all sorts of professions uh, like that. So, so it's wrong to think that the only place where there is uh, very, very large salaries is finance. That's just simply not the case. This musical doesn't include the song, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? But isn't that the crux of our anger? They just won't lend to anyone anymore. Slick solutions always lurking, slyly used to stop things working. Smash the system, trash the bankers. Yes? Pretty soon the world will thank us. What's happened here is that the governments have stepped in and massively changed the regulations governing lending. They are forcing banks to lend less. They are telling them to lend at a more expensive rate, effectively, by forcing them to hold more capital and more liquidity. Now, many of these reforms actually make sense because they ensure that the banking system is much more prudent and that there's more res greater reserves in case something goes wrong. But the inevitable consequence of that is always higher lending costs and reduced lending. Well, OK, that's all very clever, but they started this crisis. Who's to blame? Who's to blame? Who's to blame? As I think everyone is really aware, we were sort of quite happy to take the mortgages, take the credit cards when they were freely available. So although there are some important questions to be asked about bankers, hedge fund managers, investment bankers, perhaps we're all a little bit to blame. And in a way, we probably could have called the show Toxic Bankers? Question mark.